so, see a lot of the Scott and Gattis TV, which is great. Hassan, similar to this. No. What's the problem with that? Yeah, uh, but if I multiply the 2z times 16z to the fourth, I do get 32z to the fifth. But then I'm done and I don't have a minus 2z. <coughs> you need a uh, negative z minus z to the fifth. You need a minus z? No, negative one to get negative 2z squared. Not true. Right. We're not far off though, right? It's negative you have a minus one. So two, now 2z two times negative 1, there we go, negative 2z. So now we factor out that common monomial, okay, monomial, monomial meaning one, monomial meaning term or number. Okay, so we factor out that monomial. Now, can we factor this? Yeah. How so? Um, 4z squared, well, 4z squared minus one, um, and 4z squared plus one. And how did you get there? Just some trial and error, or um, just you have to get negative one, uh -huh. and they will cancel out the four z because it's positive four z minus negative four z. Uh huh. Cancels them out. Yeah. Good. Uh, so you realize that you have to get sixteen z to the fourth, and you have to get a negative one, and you also have to get no z squared term. Do you remember what that's called? Difference? Difference of two squares. two squares. Is this a square? Is one a square number? No. Can I multiply something by itself and get one? Yeah. What? One. What? Right? Kind of a trick question. One times one is one, so one is a square number. Is 16 a square number? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four times four. Is z to the fourth a square thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. z squared times z squared is z to the fourth. Uh, okay. Are we done? Remember how we just used the difference of squares? You can just write one of them. What's that? You just have to write one of them as squared. Well, no, they're different things because this one has a minus one and a plus one, so they're not identical. But if you look at this one, you notice anything similar to this? squares again, right? And it's a difference of squares. This one, it won't work. That's not a difference of squares. It's a sum of squares. And there's no nice factorization for a sum of squares, or not the real numbers at least. So this is also a sum of, or a difference of two squares. How will that difference of two squares factor? The same way the 16 to the fourth factor. Same, but not the same Except number. Except right? two. Two. Two z. Z minus one plus one and two z plus one. That's what two z plus one. Yeah. Okay. So we factored out once, and then we factored again, and then we factored a third time. We just keep factoring until there's nothing left that's factorable. Okay. So things to look out for are quadratics. Quadratics are factorable. Well. Possibly factorable. Okay. Difference of squares. Um, so far, that's what we've come across. Difference of squares. Difference of squares is kind of a special quadratic. Uh, and we just keep going until we run out of things that are factorable. I can't factor anything that's a degree one. None of those are going to be factorable because what? What are you going to multiply z to something times z to something to get z to the first? We're going to add those exponents. We have to multiply by z to the zero, which is kind of silly. Um, this one here is not factorable because we maybe happen to know that a, a sum of two squares is impossible to factor. Because okay? the reason a difference of two squares factors is that we can have a plus and a minus so that that middle term cancels. Right? We get a z squared term and a constant, but no z term. We get a uh, z to the with these two. We get a z to the fourth term and a constant but no z squared term. But there's no way to do that when the result is a plus one. Uh, plus one. Term. Okay. So, uh, try and think. Is this a 
something are quadratic, it's a different sense of squares, connect after it that way. Um, and there's there's more. There are there are more patterns like difference of squares. Um, here's one. Are these squares? These square numbers, square terms? Cube. They're cubes. They're not squares, they're cubes. Okay? And it's a sum of cubes. It turns out a sum of cubes is factorial. A sum of cubes and a difference of cubes are both factorable. Okay? Uh, so let me show you how to factor a sum of cubes. X, that's the thing that's being cubed right there, plus, what's being cubed to get 8? 2. 2 cubed is 8, so now it's plus 2. We get x squared, okay, that's that x thing squared. Uh, minus 2 times x plus this thing squared, 4. Verify it yourself. I can verify that this is the correct factorization. Distribute it. Distribute it back out and see if that would come up with. Might as well do that real quick. Uh, x to the third minus 2x squared. Well, we got a square, we don't have a squared here, so something's going to have to come along and counteract that 2x squared. So we should that, see that happen. Plus 4x. Something's going to have to cancel out that 4x as well. So what's happening here? So we get plus. 2x squared, but well, look at that, that cancels that out. Minus 4x, that cancels that out. Plus 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. So I end up with x cubed plus 8. Let me make up an example. Someone give me a, an example of a difference of. Minus, we'll do 27 just because it's different from 8. We already use 8. Uh, we could even do 64 there just so we can see like this is a cube, and this is a cube. Uh, and we can factor it out of the difference of two cubes. What do we cube to get 27? And what do you cube to get 64x cubed? Definitely an x, right? Four. 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 four times four times four is sixty-four. We kind of followed this pattern. This was x cubed plus two cubed, and you can see where the thing being cubed goes there. This second thing being cubed goes there. You take this thing, square it, uh, minus uh, this thing times that thing. Okay. But the, the signs are going to be a little different because it's a difference of cubes, and we need to come out with 64x cubed minus 27, not plus 27. Okay, so here's the difference. Um, we're going to have a minus here, and this plus, this plus. It's going to look a lot like that, only the minus is in the first parentheses, and all the others are positive. There's 4x, 3. Follows this example of, of this thing getting squared. What will go right here? 4x squared. Not 4x squared. We're squaring the whole thing. x squared. Well, it'll have an x squared, but what will the coefficient be? 2. 2. So we take this term right here. Is that thing, whatever that is right there, squared? So if we square this. 16x squared plus this thing times that thing 
12x plus this thing squared. On page um, 354, 354, that little blue box, it says key concept. It gives you like a little formula for uh, factoring the sum of squares into, or sum of cubes and difference of cubes. That's something else to be on the lookout for. Quadratics we can factor, difference of squares that we can factor, difference of two cubes sum of two cubes. Kind of a nice convenient thing about this is quadratics will come uh, in this form where you have three terms. Quadratics have three terms, like this one. The quadratic is three terms. It's a coefficient with, with something squared, uh, then a coefficient with that same thing, just not squared, and then a constant. Whatever that looks like, there's a quadratic right there, three terms three terms, all quadratics will be like that, okay? A difference of squares, a difference of two cubes, a difference of, or a sum of two cubes is two terms. It's kind of a nice way to The, the thing you're trying to factor and say, you know, can I take this any further? Or let's see, we got two terms here. Is this a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes or a difference of squares? Is this a quadratic with three terms? Okay. And the last one, we've actually already done this when we did the AC method of factoring uh, quadratics. Okay, it's called factor by grouping. So hopefully this sounds more familiar. Grouping. We're going to have four terms. We're going to break them into groups of two, two groups of two, and then in each group we're going to look for something that we can factor out of each of them, and you know, it's going to be exactly like when we did the AC method of factoring quadratics. Let's see. Quadratic, it's clearly not a sum of two cubes or a difference of two cubes or a difference of two squares. It's four terms. And right now, without any further knowledge beyond this point, factoring by grouping is, is our best option. And if it doesn't work, if this factor by grouping doesn't work, just say, can't factor, it's not factor. That's when we like kind of cut it in half and mm -hmm. Exactly. Cut it in half. This is one half of it. This is the other half. Okay. I circle them. And like I don't use parentheses and stuff like that. That can get confusing. I just want you to see that as a group of two and another group of two. So in this group of two, what are we looking for? Something that they that they both have in common. That we can factor out of both of them, undistribute from both. So what's the biggest thing you can see that can be factored out of both of those terms? One. Why? Y squared. Uh, this should say a Y. Excuse me. Okay, not clear. Yeah. 
So y squared? So if it was an x there, it would be like back in y. Yeah. Or zero. It's got to be the same variable. So we have y minus 7. And what can we back out of these two? 4. 4. four. Now, pay close attention here. This group is being added to this group. And all we're doing is factoring out something in common. So this group, which is just being factored, is still being added to this group. 4 times y minus 7. Still have addition. How do we know factor by grouping has worked? By looking at this, this step that we're currently having, it's how it works. The Yes, we have identical parentheses. If the step in the parentheses is not identical, then it's just not factorable. The only way we can factor something with four terms like this is by grouping, at least at this point. And uh, if, if these two aren't identical, then you can't go any further. You can't factor it anymore. Is this, is this factor? Is this a factor form of this thing? Yeah. I'm going to say it's not. Why is it? Why is this not a factor form of that? What's that? Well, you're not done. You're not done, but there have been other ones where it weren't done, like, um, oh, like, what? like this one. We weren't done, but it was factored. It just wasn't factored all the way. Yeah. Uh, maybe if you multiply all of it, it's not going to come out. Well, that's that's kind of part of it. Is you would have to multiply it together to get the original, but it's not a multiplication. We're we're adding. Yeah, there's an adding step. In it's not all multiplication. Remember, factors are things that you multiply together. So this is factored this, right? If we factor this, we can get this. And if we factor this, we get this. But we factored two separate polynomials, right? It's not, we can't multiply it together because it's not all multiplication. There's an addition in there. So it's not factored. It's not multiplication. Well show you something that is easy to copy and reproduce. Y minus 7, those identical parentheses. You can see why that, that, that comes from that. And Y squared plus 4 goes in the other parentheses. Okay. So that's the, you know, you can get it done. You can factor it that way. You can write it correctly. But what I want you to understand is, why? Why is that the next step? Okay. And what we're doing here is we're just factoring out a common factor just like we factored out a common factor here. Just write this to the side. 4y minus 28. Just separating that out. So can someone explain how we got from this step, right, this step right here, and this, this half of it, to this one? Four y minus twenty-eight to four times y minus seven. You guys factor four out of it. Factor out of four. Can someone like even stretch that out into to more words? What does it mean to be factored out of four? of both of these things. It's a factor of 4y. It's a factor of 28. Yeah. It's a factor of negative 28. Yeah, so it's a factor of both, and so we can take it out. And the, the verification that, that that's correct, that we can factor out of 4, is if we distribute the 4 back into the parentheses, we come out with 4y minus 27. 28. 28. Okay. The same exact thing happened between this step and this one. We factored out a common factor just like we factored out a common factor of 4 here. Right? What's the common factor in this example? 4. 4. 
Four is the common factor. Common factor of four, we factored it out of both. What's the common factor here? Y minus three. Y minus seven is the common factor. Okay? It's a factor. Factor means we multiply it by something else, right? Y minus seven is B multiplied by Y squared. It's a factor of that. Y minus seven is uh, being multiplied by four. Y minus seven is a factor of that. This term has a factor of y minus seven, and this term has a factor of y minus seven, and we factored it out, just like we factored out this four. And you can see, if you were to take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna multiply these together in a way that's a little bit different than we normally do. Normally we would take the y, you know, separately and distribute it, and be done with y, and then we would distribute the negative seven, and we would be done with it. But I'm going to take the whole thing. I'm going to take y minus 7 as an entire thing, as an entire number, and just distribute that, which is the same thing. So if we distribute this whole thing to y squared, we get y squared times y minus 7. Right? y minus 7 times that first term. We just distributed it to y squared. And then we distribute it to the 4, and we get 4 times y minus 7. Distribute the 4 and the y squared, we get all the way back to here. So, to function in this class, do you have to be able to reproduce that explanation? No, not really. Okay? Because you can see the pattern is set out. Make sure these are two identical parentheses. All right? Whatever's in there winds up in this parentheses. And then this, right, plus 4, or my, if it was a minus, it would be minus 4. Whatever's left over, right, goes right there. So you can do it. You can reproduce this factorization. Um, but it's definitely to your uh, advantage to understand why it does that. Okay? So. so life in this class becomes a lot easier when you can say why. So if you get a question that we don't, wouldn't normally understand, uh, then you can figure it out. Asking why in life, in general, is always a good thing. It's the most annoying, most dangerous question. It's true. Okay, so I'm going to give you a factor by grouping problem, and I want you to take it on. Uh, thrown together would most likely not work. Right. So most of, most of the time this won't work. And some of the time it's very useful. I would say most of the time in a math textbook it'll work out. But most of the time in the real world it will In the real world when you see these polynomials in four terms, which will happen often, uh, probably won't work just when you meet a random just has to happen just so. Now it's not to say that it's not factorable if you can't factor by grouping, it's just that you'd have to go a little bit more in algebra to be able to factor it without factor by grouping. Group these together and make sure if there's a negative in this other group, capture that negative. It's part of that group as well. So, what does this group have in common? 25 s squared. squared, which leaves us with 6 to 4. 6 to 4? 25 or 6 to 4? 
plus 4, but we need s minus 4, which is just the opposite of this. Can we get it to be that? Can we get this to be s minus 4 somehow? So, minus one. Away. <coughs> so instead of plus 1, we could do minus 1 times the opposite of these things, s minus 4 with a negative 1 outside. We factor out a negative 1 from that parentheses so that we get s minus 4. Well, minus a negative one kind of is not. Not entirely, but I don't think anybody's going to throw a lot of tomatoes at you if you do that on a regular basis. You're going to get it. Um, okay, so we factor out this common factor of s minus 4, and we're left with 25s squared minus 1. Good job, everyone. Are we done factoring? No, no sir. Why not? What is further factorable? Difference of squares. We get 5s plus 1, 5s minus 1. Just keep that one at you to make sure you always ask yourself, am I, am I done? Even though I've done this factor by grouping, which takes you know, a lot of talent and know-how and knowledge and wisdom. Elegance and geniality. Oh, nice. uh, maybe we're not done yet. Okay. So we have to just ask ourselves is there something else that we could do? Yeah, there's a difference of squares. Or, oh, maybe in another problem there's a difference of cubes that falls out of there. Okay. Yeah, what? What'd you say? You didn't say anything? Well, I did. It's just not important. Okay, good. Just keep those not important things to yourself. Just wishful thinking. All right, so we've got the, uh, the difference of cubes, sum of cubes, difference of squares. We're going to look out for all those. We're going to look for quadratics, even though they don't look like quadratics, meaning they're not a square, like an x squared. Maybe x to the fourth in there, x to the sixth. That could possibly be a quadratic form. Um, and then we have this factor right grouping. We're just looking for all of those things, and if we can further factor it out, uh, we, we do. So first, when I say that number one thing you should always do at the very beginning of any factoring problem? The greatest common factor. Factor out the greatest common factor. And step two is factor. There's just not any set thing, but you can look for look for some patterns like quadratics. Remember, these are three terms. That's helpful. Difference of squares. Difference of cubes, sum of cubes, there's no sum of squares, but there is a sum of cubes. Remember that all of these are two terms. <coughs> and then, so we got factor by grouping. And the grouping part means you're grouping two sets of two, which means we need to have four terms. Could possibly have 45 parentheses. I don't know if it's like to the 90th power. Okay, if the power is big enough, what's the smallest power it would have to be? What's the smallest degree that this polynomial would have to be to have 45 sets of parentheses? A lot. Anybody know? I have a guess. 45. It's got to be a degree 45 to have 45. Because at its most factored out, each parentheses is going to have an x. 
right? And then maybe plus something else. Or so, minus uh, or minus something else, plus a negative. Right? So, you're going to have an x in this one, and an x in this one, and an x in this one, and an x in this one. So, all 45 of those are going to have an x, okay? And then maybe you'll have like a 2, a number out in front of constant multiple. So, all 45 of those are going to get multiplied together. And the biggest x that's going to come out of that is going to be the result of that x being multiplied the second x, to the third x, the fourth x. After all that combining and distributing, we wind up with our x to the 45. Right? So you can have as many, possibly not definitely, but as many factors as you have the degree. Right? Degree 4, possibly 4 factors, 4 parentheses. So that highest degree is going to be important a lot. It's the, it's the subject of a couple of theorems, yeah, that we're going to learn later. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty much 4.5.4. Okay. And to just get your brains thinking about 5.5, .5, Look at a piece of, uh, of art that I think it's already that I made. What is that, Frackle? No. It's just a desk and a piece of paper. It took a little work, okay? So be very fast. Okay, so here's what I want you to imagine. Oh, like, I told you. I'm showing you press. So imagine that you found uh, like a scrap of homework on the ground. Trying to introduce you to this idea of dividing polynomials, kind of a weird idea, uh, in a, a slightly creative way. All right. So you found this scrap of paper on the ground. Someone did some homework. Okay. Uh, and it says factor the polynomial. Okay. And this polynomial is factorable. And if you'll notice, it's four terms long. But if you try to be factored by grouping on this, it won't. Because when you group this and you group this, the parentheses that you get will not be identical. Okay. But it's still factorable. So just because it's not factorable by grouping doesn't mean it's not factorable altogether. Okay. This, is a, this is a lead in into something called long division of polynomials. Okay. But so that process of long division isn't confusing to you, we're going to look at what are we really doing. Okay. And so trying to figure out what's missing on this piece of paper is really what long division does. Okay. So you get out a piece of paper, and right, you put it right behind theirs, and you start to ask yourself, how can I figure out? Because you, you, it's like you're given this wonderful piece of information. You already have one of the factors. How are you going to decide what this other factor needs to be? Divide by the factor you have. What's that? Divide by the factor that you have. Yeah, divide by the fact that you have, but with numbers that makes sense, but with polynomials, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. really, divide by that polynomial really it just means asking this question, what is the other factor that I would need? If one of the factors is x plus 2, how do I wind up with this? Can we piece it together little by little? It's like little piece by little piece. Could you maybe tell me what this first term would be? Why does this have to be 2x squared? Because we need to multiply this factor by this other factor, and the first thing we're going to get is 2x cubed. So that's got to be a 2x squared. There's no other way to get an x cubed but to multiply the x by an x squared. And to get the 2x cubed, we need a 2 in front. Okay. Um, maybe there's a reason to OK, so that's a good start. We're not done, obviously. Because what are we going to wind up getting if we distribute this 2 to the 2x squared? 4. 4x squared. What do we want to get? We want to get x squared. OK. Well, I guess we're going to kind of have to keep track of what we're getting and what we want to get. This is all the stuff that long division does, but 
in this way we actually see like behind the scenes what's going on. Okay, so in blue, I'm gonna keep track of what we actually get along the way, and then we need to like kind of fix it. And then we'll get what we were supposed to get. So when we distribute the x to the two x squared, we do get two x cubed, that's good to go, that's like locked in. Okay? But when you distribute the two to two x squared, you get four x squared. Right? We, what we're getting right now is four x squared. But we want to get x squared. Right? We're off. We have too much, too many x squareds, right? How much too much do we have? Two x squared. We have two x squared too many? I think we have a little bit more than two x squared too many. What's that? We have three x squared too many, right? If we wanted to get x squared, we would need to have three x squared less than what we have. Does that make sense? Okay. So right now, the, everything that we have gives us a four x squared. We want an x squared. We need to get negative three x squared. Yeah? Um, negative four x. Put right here? Yeah. Let's see what happens if we put a negative four x. So let's see, let's let's multiply this out and see what we've got so far. Okay. X times two x squared is two x to the third. Okay. And then two times two x squared is that four x squared, which is you know, that's like a problem, okay? Am I putting a minus four x here? Let's see what happens. We take x and we distribute it to the negative four x and we get minus four x squared, but that completely cancels this four x squared. We want to be left with what? A single x squared. Yeah? So is this pretty much just like factoring because you already have one factor? It's factoring, but yeah, you already have a factor. Yeah. And it'll lead into testing C. Out and we are operating in so uh, it. Instead of 4x, we have negative 2x. Do a minus 2x? What's it? I erased the paper. I erased the. You could also erase a little bit of the deck. Oh, yeah, I think so. You could have erased the desk. The desk is not erasable. And paper is erasable? Yeah, it's not paper that I'm erasing. This is dumb. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know what's happening. I'm just surprised that it's happening. Yeah. I didn't know it would do that. Anyway, um, so put a minus 2x there instead. Okay, let's see what happens then. Well, the 2x squared is still going to give us 2x cubed plus 4x squared. It keeps doing that, right? So what are we going to get here? Negative 2x times x gives us minus 2x squared. So how many, two, how many x squared do we have? 2x squared, how many do we want? We want to only have one x squared. So instead of a, a two or a four, let's use three x squared. Keep track of it down here. Um, Minus a three x, not a four, not a two, but a three x. Does that work? Again, the the two x squared is still giving us two x cubed plus four x squared. And then if we have a negative three x, you distribute x to negative three x, you get negative three x squared. How many x squares do we have now? One, one. one x squared. Isn't that what we wanted? We're getting there. We're getting there. We have a two x cubed and an x squared. Okay. That's great. 2x cubed, and we combine these like terms, we get an x squared like we wanted to get. Okay? But now we've kind of created another issue because we also have to distribute the 2. And we distribute the 2 to the negative 3, what do we get? Minus 6x. Do we want minus 6x? No. What do we want? Minus 5x. Minus 5x. Right? So what do we need to do in order to turn this negative 6x into a negative 5x? Add an x. Okay, you see what we're doing now. So what are we going to put here so that when we distribute it to the x, we'll get an x to combine with the negative 6x to give us negative 5x. 
Just add one. Minus one. One? Minus one? We want to plus one. Oh. Plus one. Okay. We kind of add the end of our rope here. We don't have much else we can do. Let's hope this works. Okay. So one times x does give us a plus x. Right? What's going to be the true test now? It's two. We need to get a two. And in fact, yes, two distributed to the one gives us the two that we needed. So if that hadn't worked at the end, then we failed. Then we would have what's called a remainder. Uh, coming back. Yeah. We're bringing remainders back. Yeah. Okay. So you see what's going on there? Like the, and when we do long division, it, it should make more sense when you realize all you're doing is you're you're factoring, but you've been given a factor. Okay. You have a factor already, so you figure out. Well, I know I'm going to have to distribute this into this other factor. So what does it need to be? Well, I know what the first thing needs to be, so I get this first thing, but then I get not quite enough uh, x squareds, so I need to put a new thing there, so I subtract off some x squareds so that I get the right number of x squareds, and the same thing for the x term, and then we hope that the constant works out at the end. Does that make sense? Fun. Very fun. Okay, I'm gonna, that, that's just, to get your brains ripened up for that section, we're just going to do 5.4 as homework. But this is a lead into 5.5 and long division of polynomials. And I think it's going to pay off for us.